If you are a growing business and you're finding that your technology costs are spiraling out of control as you grow and scale a mid-market business, well, this video is for you. We're gonna be talking about ways that you can optimize your hardware costs to get more value out of your business as you're working with Google Workspace. Now, many businesses, as they grow, end up taking advantage of hardware leasing or end up spending a lot of capital expenditure on hardware for the business as it grows. And, you know, we find ourselves buying monitors and computers and the latest whiz -bang machines for the business and for your employees. Now, in this video, I'd like to share some of the benefits of considering using Chrome hardware instead of Macs or PCs in the business. Uh, some of the pitfalls that businesses start to fall into when they're considering Chrome hardware and some of the benefits and advantages of working with this pretty amazing tech when you're rolling it out in a business. Now, if you're a small or medium-sized business owner, maybe you've got 10 employees or less, it might be compelling for you to buy one or two Chrome machines and try them out and see how they are with your team and potentially then roll them out to the rest of your employees. But if you're a larger organization, there are you know, specific benefits, um, particularly around hardware lifecycle and ensuring that the manageability and the policies of each piece of hardware that you have uh, is something that can be broadly managed across a base. And you start to think about the hardware life cycle of different pieces of hardware, how long they last, uh, you know, what's the interoperability, what's the upgradability, um, and all these questions uh, we're gonna try and answer as we talk about Chrome hardware. Now, one of the most obvious advantages of the Chrome ecosystem is the big benefit in cost. And that is because Chrome machines don't have all the, you know, whiz-bang uh, latest processes that are needed. They don't need, you know, crazy amounts of RAM or storage because most of their operations and heavy lifting is kind of done online in the cloud. And the other great thing about Chrome hardware is because it's Linux based, it's a little bit less of a hardware and processor footprint than a normal computer would need. Now, some of the other great advantages of actually working with it is uh, being able to connect the Chrome hardware to your uh, you know, ecosystem in terms of Google Workspace. And I'm gonna talk a little bit about, you know, how some of the policies are really helpful there. Um, but really the main difference that it comes down to when you're actually supporting a fleet of machines, particularly in a midsize and larger business, is the cost of maintenance and the cost of support. Now, with a traditional Mac or a PC, there's a lot of time spent on things like updates, rolling out software, uh, maybe imaging or versioning your different machines to make sure that everything is taken care of. And then you need to worry about things like antivirus, protecting them, uh, you know, password protection, directory services, and all of these require other services, other software, and know-how in, in terms of your team actually managing them. Whereas with Chrome, because it's a very simple system, you can manage the policies from the cloud right from the Google Workspace admin panel. Um, and from there, there isn't really much day-to-day -day management or maintenance needed on any one of these machines uh, because there's uh, no real you know, massive threats around viruses or malware on Chrome machines. Um, they're all locked down with secure Enclave technology, which means that the account is fully locked down to your person's Google account or the employee or you know person in your organization. Maybe they're in a school. It's locked down to their Google account and it's all encrypted there as well, which is great. Um, and overall, there's, there's less needing to kind of like open the machines and tinker with them um, and, and even tinker with the operating system itself. Uh, you know, Chrome always copies a second copy, uh, carries, sorry, a second copy of the operating system so that anytime there's an issue with the machine, you can actually just hit a power wash and completely wipe the machine, re-enroll it, and it's ready to go again. Not only is that like ease of management there, which means it's gonna cut down on the amount of time that your help desk spends actually managing and monitoring the machines, uh, but from a security perspective, Chrome is absolutely amazing. Now, I already mentioned that anyone's files that are local on a Chromebook are actually just connected intrinsically to someone's Google account, and so they're locked down to all of the security available in Google's account. But from an actual local device perspective, uh, if for example, you're a business and you have a BYOD policy right now, which is bring your own device, you can run into all kinds of problems with the risk of losing business data. And that could be something like your employees have files sitting in their My Documents folder or on a Mac in their Documents folder local to the machine that actually are not backed up to the corporate servers. And you've got to start to think about backup software for the end machines, or you've got to try and educate the users on saving things into uh, you know, something like Google Drive. But inevitably, you're going to have someone who doesn't follow the rules, or if you haven't done all of the overhead and actually managing those individual machines, uh, you know, maybe your machine gets lost or stolen or broken, and you're potentially going to have a data loss event in the business. Now, one cool little feature that uh, Chromebooks have is, you know, primarily most of the work is being done online, so there's no real backups that you need to worry about. For even for files that are actually stored locally on the Chromebook, 
you can set a policy inside of Google Workspace so that any files downloaded or stored locally on the machine will automatically synchronize to Google Drive. And the advantage of that is that if anything happens to that local machine, it's all automatically backed up to Google Drive. And you don't have to pay for extra software. It's all just automatically done via a policy. And there's no end user education required as well because it all just happens as soon as they sign into the account. Now, what I love about that is it means that, uh, you know, anything happen, anything can happen with a local machine and the end user isn't, uh, you know, adversely uh, affected by something going wrong. Quite often, you know, and I've seen all kinds of crazy stories, you know, in the old days, we would have employees that would put emails into their rubbish bin in Outlook and uh, would get angry when we cleaned out the rubbish bin when we were doing maintenance because they'd say, well, I was saving those files for later. And I'm not here to make fun of anyone, but I'm, what I'm trying to convey is that um, sometimes team members will work in a particular way, which is not necessarily inside the IT policy that we want. And they might not think about what might happen to the computer breaking or something going wrong with the computer and the files that were not properly saved to the server. Um, and so having these policies in place are kind of like a catch all, which means that, uh, you know, nothing can really go wrong there. Now, the next feature of deciding to work with Chrome OS as your operating system, and remember these come in both laptops and desktop format as well in Chrome boxes and other Chrome hardware, is uh, the speed of onboarding. Being able to onboard an employee really quickly, and we've got another video that we recorded recently just on onboarding and white glove service and what that means to getting your team uh, all set up when they're just starting in a new position. But getting your team onboarded quickly can be as simple as issuing a Google account, putting them in the right group, and then allowing them to sign into their new device. It's automatically gonna download bookmarks via policy if you've set that up in your admin panel, and you can have all kinds of other features and settings enabled on the local computer automatically via cloud policy. Now, if you're working with a white glove service provider like a vendor or a consultancy like us, you can even have the machine shipped directly to your employee so you don't even have to manage it yourself inside the business. You just call up someone like us and say, hey, I've got a new employee starting on Monday, and you set up their email and send them a computer and a service provider will be able to send that straight to them. And that makes onboarding new employees really simple and reduces the amount of stress and time taken up on your IT team who are actually having to manually implement and manually deploy devices. As you grow, you will probably be making the shift from Mac and PC to Chrome OS if you're a business that's really interested in getting all of the best benefits of the Google Workspace ecosystem. And let me tell you, this is a deliberate move. It takes planning and also you've got different stages of the move and you're probably not gonna find everybody right across your organization ready to adopt Chrome right from the get-go. It might be one small group of users, it might be a group of VIP test users who are gonna try it out first before a more broad rollout, um, or it might be you know, a number of executives trying out the devices first and seeing if they like the vibe of working with Chrome. It's always good to start at the top because you can then have that culture filter through to the rest of the team. But also be mindful that you're not necessarily going to get 100% penetration with Chrome OS right across the organization. It may be that only certain user profiles or work profiles are actually gonna get the best out of Chrome OS. And there might be some jobs like the job of a graphic designer that just can't be done on Chrome and is instead gonna to need to be on a different operating system. Now, don't let that dishearten you. You can still obviously build those user profiles and start rolling it out progressively. And what we find is for most organizations that roll out a few Chromebooks, very quickly that starts to spread and they start to consider and, and even challenge the reasons why you might be using other operating systems across the business. Because what we know for every business that rolls out Chrome, the support time and the effort time required to manage the end devices drops dramatically over time very, very quickly. So if you're interested in learning more about Chrome, if you're interested in an audit for your organization, if you'd like to set up a proof of concept and see if Chrome is a good fit for you, or if you'd just like to have a chat about Google Workspace and how you might get more value out of the ecosystem and Google's amazing platform for businesses and educational institutions, jump on the link right down below. You can apply for an audit and our team will be in touch soon. If you haven't already checked out the other videos on our channel, we've got heaps of videos on growing and scaling your business, technology strategy, and ensuring that you get the most out of your investment in Google Workspace. Check those out and I look forward to seeing you in another video. If you're not already subscribed, please make sure you do that. Drop us a like if you liked the video and send some comments down below if you'd like some questions answered. We'll do our best to get to those soon.